What's up everybody, this is BS for Build. I'm Chris, we're back in the shop working on our E46 budget BMW fun. Um, if you remember in the last episode, we blew a hole in our radiator, so Eric and I ran down to the junkyard, grabbed a new radiator. We are gonna mount that up and then we're gonna hack our thermostat in the front so it will always be open so we can get maximum flow and hopefully not overheat our engine. And for a little bit of fun, I got rockets. I'm going to show you guys how to do a DIY double rocket launcher on your car. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so here's the game plan. Eric's got our new radiator, he's getting that tuned up right now. He's got it cleaned up so far, we're throwing in a new drain plug. <clears throat> and that's getting ready to go back in the back. We're making alterations to the thermostat thanks to a viewer uh, named Nathan who sent me a really awesome, very in-depth email and uh, showed us how to hack the thermostat. What we're going to be doing is grounding out the thermostat so it tries to basically stay as open as it possibly can at all times. And we're hoping that'll get the maximum amount of fluid flowing through there. Uh, since we've reduced it, it should help out our cause. So we're going to go ahead and do that all first and then give it, uh, put it through a test run. Alright guys, so what we did here to get our thermostat open, this thermostat has a bit of a heater core in it and uh, to, to initialize that, the car uh, uses the ground and it, it mechanically grounds, uh, programmatically grounds this ground and then that heats up the heater core so and then that makes the thermostat open to the full power. So what we did was we took the ground and rerouted it so it's always grounded. That means the heater core in here will always turn on which will make it easier for the thermostat to open and it will open at full uh, gate. So that's all good and done, and now we are filling up the system and bleeding it um, so we can try and run it. All right, everything's plumbed up. The system is bled. Um, our new grounded thermostat is on. It's time to kick this thing on and give it a shot. So far, so good. Alright guys, well, bummer time. Um, as you probably saw, uh, our top top end um, exploded and shot water out once again. And um, so what's happening is as the system's pressurizing and it's reducing down in size, it's just creating too much backed up pressure, which is going to put a lot of strain on our water pump. And uh, we're just not even getting the system to really even heat itself up before it's blowing off. So um, we're... You know, we might be able to make this work, and we could have made it work, probably, but the thing is, we didn't want to take the radiator, and the whole pur purpose of moving it in the back is so we wouldn't have to worry about it, and we took the radiator and made it something that, you know, when it was in the front, we really wouldn't have to worry about it that much, to it being in the back, and it's the thing that we're worried about the absolute most. So, um, it's a bummer, um, but until we can do it properly with hard lines, we're gonna move the radiator back up front. So, uh, it's time for me to fab up some front mounts, and uh, get to work, because now we're like three days behind schedule, uh, not that the schedule is too tight on this build anyways, but um, yeah, so I'm just going to start uh, fabricating a front for this radiator. Eric is going to come back in the next few days and work on uh, helping me fabricate a uh, front core support out of some uh, square square bar. So we're still in a, we're still in a good place and we're going to mount this radiator in a good way and then we'll do some um, kind of like ram bash bar type of style stuff underneath to make sure that if we do bottom out that there's some bars there to protect the radiator first. Alright, time to get to work. All right guys, well it's been quite the whirlwind. This has been a really actually tough night for the radiator world. Um, our new radiator would not fit in between the two frame rails and I didn't want to cut the frame rails to fit it in there. So I grabbed our BMW frame rail, or BMW radiator and did some inspection to figure out what blew up on it when we lost all our fluid pressure. And it turned out that the drain plug blew, blew off. 
Um, we had to do a DIY drain plug on the other radiator just to get that to work. So I actually was able to swap the drain plug off of our new radiator, put it on our old BMW radiator, and we were okay to go. Uh, that was really random. I don't know how we didn't catch that the last time we were working on it, but oh well. So then that one would now fit between the frame rails. I haven't welded anything up just because I wanted to just test the system overall to make sure we could get it to work. So right now it's stress testing. What I know right now is the water is flowing from top to bottom and it is cooling itself down. So I'm just letting it run for quite a while. Um, I'm gonna hide inside the car where it's safe in case it explodes. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna let this thing keep running. The fan's doing well, radiators feels okay to the touch. It's warm, but it's not too hot and everything's circulating. So fingers crossed that at least tonight I can cross a radiator issue off the list. Radiator's fixed, radiator's fixed, radiator's fixed. Yay! Radiator's fixed. Radiator's fixed, that means tomorrow we can come in here and focus on the front end and the important parts. Mounting rockets in your engine bay. What's up guys, we're back in the shop. Uh, Eric is working away at the front end. He's gonna try, it, not try, he's gonna, he's gonna do it. He's gonna weld up supports for the, the lower supports for the radiator right now. And then if we have enough time, we're gonna come back around and weld up the top supports, which are gonna act as our core support because we lost our core support in the wreck. Um, it, w it wasn't that like crazy important anyway. So our core support's gonna be used to hold the radiator in place as well as hold the headlights on. Similar to what all core supports do. Anyways. So Eric's working on welding up front. While he's doing that, I'm gonna be working on rockets. I'm gonna be working on assembling rockets, making them look cool, and building the rocket launching units. Yeah. All right guys, so we're having a slight change of plans. Uh, after lowering down the car, we realized that our radiator mount is way too low. Um, when the car was up, it was deceivingly good looking and now it's too low. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple chops, raise the radiator up about six inches, and then uh, throw it back in. And to do that, we're gonna use some of this flexi bendy hose. We got two of those, one for the inlet and outlet. And we're gonna raise it up and replumb it. All right, well Eric's up there working away. Time for me back here to be not really working away and building rockets. Uh, this is just a prime example of what happens when you binge watch like all of Colin Furs' channel in one week. I got really inspired to do something really fun with this car. So we're gonna mount two rockets under the hood. Well, we have no hood, but in the engine bay, we're gonna wire them back to the car's uh, power source, put a switch near the driving position, flip the switch, by Felicia, rockets fly off. Here's how we're gonna do it. All right, so here's our car. Here's our engine bay through here. We're gonna mount one rocket right here, going back, and one rocket right here, going back. Plan is to wire both of these to a switch. We're gonna run through the firewall into the driver's position right here. Switch right here. We're gonna reuse our toggle switch from the road trip when I mounted um, mortars in the car. Flip the switch, and what that's gonna do is bridge the connection. So we're gonna tap into the car's power source right here. Switch will go in line, flip the switch, that'll ground and uh, yeah, that'll ground out this power source. Power's gonna fly to these two things. It's gonna ignite the rocket launchers and they're gonna fly off. So first thing we gotta do, build some rockets. All right, so here's our rocket packs. The only big problem I have with this is they kind of look like Crayola crayons and that's just stupid. So here's what I got. Carbon fiber wrap for the bodies and I got a new nose cone set. We'll paint these black and then we'll have cool looking rockets. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. All right, rocket number one is assembled. So what I did is I painted the nose cone to match the tailpiece and then I wrapped the body in carbon fiber. While I was in there, I snuck this aluminum tubing inside here. What that is, is it's gonna slide over our guide rail for launching. So the way it'll slide into the car is onto that guide rail and then it'll slide off when we need to launch the rocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one, just like this one.
All right, guys, Eric is done welding up the front. Um, he's going to come back and grind down some of the stuff and clean it up, but this is the finished product for our front. we got our core support and our radiator support right here. So the radiator is going to slot right down there in the middle, and then I'm going to use those brackets over there to mount my headlights too and my uh, blinkers, and then the bumper is going to come right under here, and it is going to look really, really cool when we get it all put together. Um, we know that it is off to the side. Uh, that's because the frame rails are off to the side and we're building off of the frame rails and uh, zero fucks given man we think it looks awesome too so added added benefit so that's that uh, for now he's gonna clean that up and when we come back this weekend we'll mount everything up in there all right we got our rockets all ready next thing we're gonna need is a horizontal launching station that we can mount in the engine bay of the car so I've grabbed some of the leftover sheet metal from the window louvers experiment and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start mating two pieces of this up and building a little launching point that mounts our railing piece that will direct the rocket on its way out. I'ma fight till the day that I die. Swear to God that I put that on my life and I'ma try my best to love forever. To enlighten. I'm a space, baby, I'm a night and I'm a glad take off and fly. Yeah. If you wanna stun me, nigga, keep on trying. If I leave, I'm not leaving inside. You won't see me cry. All right, well, hopefully you can see what we're doing here. It's kind of like an erector set for a slow kid. Um, yes, I could have taken a wide piece of sheet metal and bent it, but I don't have one of those. So you can see what we're doing. We're, we're laying all the groundwork to be able to stitch this thing together. So we're going to rivet everything together to stitch it together. So that'll get us our nice V-shape with our backing. Once we have our backing, we'll mount our rod in here where we want our rocket to fly out of. We're going to have to do a little bit of welding with this guy. We'll get it to length, we'll weld it up, and then we'll go look at where we're gonna position it in the car. If I leave, I'm not leaving in silence. You won't see me cry. You gon' see the fire in my eyes. If I go, I must start a riot. I'm fighting for my life. Yeah. All right. We have one of these things made. I have to really quickly make another one, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So we got our three pieces all uh, bound together, riveted together. Um, and then we have our rod that came out and I grabbed some of this threaded rod, threaded a hole through here, got a bolt here, bolt here to hang on to this piece, went up and welded it to my rod. And then in the back, I welded it as well to the sheet. So that's nice and sturdy and on there. And then grab our rocket, figure out which way the fins go. Like so, rocket slides down and it's nice and in there. So as we're driving around, this thing won't fall off, it won't rotate around, it won't do anything. And, it's, and we're gonna sit it, you know, something like this inside the car. And then we have our backing plate for thrust against it and we're gonna drill a hole to run wires out and we're all set. So I'm gonna make one more of these and then we're gonna start mounting in the car. This is exciting, this is fun. All right, yeah, look at these, boom. They, uh, they both came together great. They're both really sturdy. The welding went a lot better than I thought it would. Um, these things are just, they're good. They're good to go. Look at this, look at this. So, um, I'm stoked. Oh man, they can still slide off. Um, I'm stoked. The welding went a lot better than I thought it would and everything's just gone great. Uh, so the next thing is to find places to mount these in the car. I wanna try and mount them kind of symmetrically, but our frame is a little bit, um, uh, the, the frame rails are like a little bit sideways, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to find good mounting points But uh, yeah, I want to mount these two things up. So they're kind of pointing out and real aggressive looking So I'm gonna try and find some mounting points and bolt them on Woo -woo! All right, we got rockets Mounted so what I used was a threaded rod that goes into different little like frame spots And then with bolts on both sides of it so I can tighten it down and these are pretty adjustable So I can kind of adjust the pitch and the angle and the left right and all this stuff Overall, they're pretty good right now. They they can be touched up a little bit, but you know this is just something to have fun with anyway. So it's not it's not the end of the world if they don't point the exact right way. But uh, they're on there. They're on there real sturdy. They're not going to come off on us. Um, I'm very happy with the way that this is working out. So the next thing I need to do is wire these things up. You uh, you got to run wire from the uh, motors of the rockets. Uh, run wire back to a power source, which we're going to grab onto the dash, and then a switch to launch them. So we're getting close to, uh, to having these things uh, test ready, which I'm very excited about. All right guys, the car is wired up. Let me explain what we did. So to each rocket, we need to run a ground, 
and a hot um, 12 volt um, lead, but we want the 12 volt to be on a switch. So here you have, I uh, just drilled a hole in the backing of the rocket because the motors are gonna go in the back of the rocket here. And so I have these little uh, alligator clips. Hot is pink, ground is black. Same over here, hot is pink, ground is black. These will tuck behind the rocket when we are ready. So um, those hots are not actually hot right now because they are plumbed to a switch which is inside. So I ran from the power uh, circuit here, down through my firewall, around, and temporarily just have it sitting on the passenger's seat to a switch. So you have one single line running from the power straight to the switch and that goes in here. All right, so right now the switch is in the off position. It's got an open circuit. So this and this aren't connected. This line runs back out to the car, out to the, uh, the hot lead. So anyways, so it's open right now. When you flip this switch, it closes it and it's essentially like bridging these two connections. It's like connecting this wire to this wire. So when you connect that wire to that wire, it's gonna shoot power back down the line, which runs back out the firewall and splits off and runs to this spot and that spot. So, the next step is getting the motors inside the rockets. Okay, so motors are cool and all, they're these things, and in the bottom you ignite that, it goes inside the rocket in there, and you ignite that. But these are really the cool thing that I wanted to talk more about. So these are the little, uh, these are the motor ignitions, they go inside here. So what happens is when you take, you, you wire in your hot to here and your ground to here, and when you push power to that, it sends power to this and basically shorts that circuit and then will spark and that sparks your motor. So when I did the mortars in the episode of um, the road trip, that's how I lit the fuse. So these things can be jammed inside firework fuses. They can be, you know, anything that you want to start a fire with or, you know, ignite something with, you can use these. And you can probably make something similar at home. So these are pretty cool. The uh, motors are expensive. They're a little too spendy just to buy, uh, to get your hands on a bunch of these. But if you had some really small gauge wire, maybe a little hot glue and some black powder or something, you can make these at home. And that's a really cool way if you want to wire up some craziness. Um, and continuously be able to maybe launch fireworks from a, a, a mortar or anything like that, these are definitely the way to go. If you jam one of those in the neck of a fuse, it'll light it up every single time. So you just stick one of those in the bottom of the mortar, run that out and out, and I'm gonna wire up my ground and my hot to each one of these. Then when I flip that switch, it'll send power to this, it'll ignite this, igniting the motor, and launching our rocket. All right guys, it's finally time. I think it's time to test these babies. I'm super excited. All right, in three, two, one. <laughs> grossly underestimated the power of these rockets. These are the nose cones from the rockets and they both shot holes in the garage door and just stayed there. This is like big ass fiberglass. The nose cones just plastered a hole in the door. All right, well, rockets are success and they're dangerous. So don't try this at home. Oh my god, the landlord's not gonna love that. Oh my god, well that was awesome. Rocket launchers were a big success. Uh, I'm super thrilled with how that worked out. Uh, and I'm glad we got them done in time. So uh, I hope you guys learned something. DIY rocket launchers, pretty rad mod. Uh, this only took about $25 out of our budget, I think. I think uh, each rocket was about 12 bucks. So. That, uh, that was pretty fun. The event coordinator actually sent out an email two days ago saying that uh, they have made a modification to the rules and all decorations for the car are not counted in the budget. As well as our budget is like, we've trimmed it down so far that this car like costs about less than $150 right now. Uh, I sold the mirrors uh, yesterday, so anyways, things are moving. Um, Thank you guys for all the support on that. Thanks for checking out the Panjo store and, uh, and, and picking up those things. And um, that's all went really well. 
Uh, so we are going to be this weekend installing a hydraulic e-brake for this car and doing some other fun stuff. And if anybody's got any ideas for cool decorations, the idea behind the rally is it's, uh, you know, your car's got to be on budget. And other than that, you're just supposed to be a goof. So um, if you guys have any ideas on that, help us figure out how to be more goofy. Um, we'll still have in the BS for Build style. Just, you know, shoot them our way. Leave some comments. Rocket launchers is a good start though. I cannot believe it blew holes in the garage door. Oh my God. Thank you guys very much for watching. You can find us at facebook.com slash BS for Build and we are BS for Build on Instagram. We also have our website bsforbuild.com where we have our shop down and you can scroll down to the bottom. You got our shop where you can buy hats, uh, key tags, shirts, all sorts of great stuff. All the proceeds from buying anything at the shop go directly towards supporting the builds and rocket launchers. Um, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace.